I guess, you know, as someone who does a lot with the playoff show and whatnot, what was your initial reaction when you saw Georgia come in at 12 and then thus theoretically not in the college football playoff? Slightly surprised because everyone's talked about they have the number one strength of schedule in the country. But I think what's happened with Georgia is the football judgment part of it from the committee has combined with the losses has hurt them. Now, is that appropriate? That's up to debate. But it's been the way they've looked and not just the Ole Miss game. It's mm -hmm. been the first two and a half quarters at Alabama, the Kentucky game, Florida game, um, you know, and they've played to their potential, arguably full potential, one and a half games. Texas in the second half against Clemson. Mm -hmm. Now, they deserve credit for all of that. I'm not trying to diminish mm -hmm. that. I'm just saying I think that's my best guess because clearly their schedule has been the toughest in the country. Mm -hmm. They've played more ranked opponents on road and neutral sites they've had home games. So it's been a ridiculous schedule. And I think the thing is, is if they play well Saturday night, everything will sort of come mm -hmm. out and be fine. But I think it was almost like if you looked at each set of rankings as a bit of a snapshot, and they do say they go back to a blank sheet of paper every week, mm -hmm. you only can kind of do that yeah. because you have to take into consideration the whole season. But I would say it's probably more of a reflection of what are they up, what are they right now? Mm. You know, how how good are they? Why are they not playing their potential? I think it's more in their case about how they have played recently as opposed to who they played and how how high their potential is. So the general consensus seems to be if Georgia wins this game tomorrow and, and handles its business, that they're in with two losses. Yeah. I mean be, is there any world in which you think they could get in with three losses? There is a world in which they could. It would probably take some help around them. That's why I think I'm not so caught up on the three losses. How do they play? Now, if they if they play Tennessee and they lose on a 62-yard field goal, they still they still play the toughest schedule in the country. And so now you evaluate how do they play? How do they play the rest of the season? Did anyone else face the same type of challenges that they did in terms of uh, schedule? So. I, I still think there is a way I wouldn't I would call this a near elimination game because they will need some help if they lose the third game and you can argue all day and it's not a bad argument about whether that should be the case you know given the teams that they've played but I think it will be a near elimination situation but I won't I won't say that they're out of it for sure simply because their schedule is so much more than what anybody else has played the same thing. Kind of a general question, but what do you want to see from this Georgia team tomorrow? Protect the quarterback, run the ball a little bit, don't turn the ball over. Um, you know, I think their defense has played well uh, for the most part. They've certainly you know, gotten after passers in big situations. They've played well. Maybe not to their standards statistically against the run or the ethereal realm mm -hmm. standard that they've set for the last several years, but they're still really good against the run. So, you know, Tennessee's got a got an outstanding running game, and I think the biggest challenge of the game is how will they handle the defensive front? Because Ole Miss might have more explosive havoc wreakers on the defensive front individually, but nobody has a deeper defensive line than Tennessee. And Tennessee's got a couple that can mess things up too. Tennessee, Georgia, Texas A&M, Ole Miss have elite defensive lines. Georgia's offensive line did not play well against Ole Miss's last week. That's the first thing I want to see from him. With Carson back and just the way he's performed overall this season, for a guy that was thought to be such an important piece to this team, what do you want to see out of him on Saturday in terms of just correcting some of the issues he's had of late? Don't turn the ball over. And, you know, go ahead and take the, take the check down if that's all you've got. Get the ball out of your hand, you know distribute the ball and they don't have as many playmakers as they've had in years past but don't press so much to make the big play the big play will come he's proven very capable of doing that over the years but you know the number of the turnovers the number of interceptions not all of them are small there have been some deflected balls I, I don't know that the receivers have always helped him out the way that you know they might hope and the receivers themselves would hope but got to take care of stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't, can't have fumbles, you can't have bad interceptions. You throw one, so what? But you can't let them pile up. And I think that's that's what's happened to Carson and Big Ben. How much do you think this game changes on whether or not he can take the 
pretty significantly. I mean, I think Gaston Moore played well uh, the other night, but he, you know, Nico is a really talented guy. And I think the question would be, um, you know, how wide open are they? Now they came, came in against Mississippi State and they let him run the offense. But there, I think the thing that people forget, this is a running football team. I mean, Nico has the talent to make big plays. They run the ball. That's what they do. That's what they're best at. You know, because they've struggled a little bit in the passing game and against their better opponents, too. And some of that has been Nico misses. Some of it's been drops. There's been a number of things. But the one thing that's been consistent is Dylan Sampson running the football. So they're a running team. And so I think it's a big deal because George is going to be hard to run against in that stadium night environment, backs against the wall. So you're going to have to make some plays down the field. And Nico's obviously got a lot more experience, although he's still obviously really young, but he's played more than Moore has. So yeah, I think it's a pretty big deal, and you know, hopefully he'll be able to play. Just in terms of the environment, you mentioned that night game and, and all the excitement. What do you expect it to be like tomorrow from Athens? Desperate, angry, both the team and the fans. They want to get behind them. They want to you know, keep the winning streak going against Tennessee, and probably more than anything else, they want to prove a point to the selection committee that they're being undervalued. So, I mean, the last time, you know, it's really funny, you know, they were supposedly doubted, but not by me. There was one person on the set that picked the dogs to win in Texas. Then again, I thought they'd win an Ole Miss last week. So what do I know? But, um, so I think that, you know, they'll probably play up the disrespect part from the committee, but they are, what, 10 point favorite? So somebody's expecting them to win. But I imagine that they'll try to plug into that and sort of plug into being the first team out and show that's not the way it should be. And, you know, two teams playing this game, Tennessee's good. You know, I think after Tennessee lost to Arkansas and when they played Alabama, Alabama was, you know, in a little bit of a reeling, staggered state, probably not quite as sharp as they've been early in the season. And that's not to diminish the win. It's just saying I think it has functioned together that maybe we haven't paid enough attention to Tennessee. They're really good. And you know, that defensive front will carry them a long, long way. And I think we'll give them a chance um, Saturday night. Thanks, Thanks for